And good morning, it's your friendly neighborhood Tyrone, and today we're going to be reviewing the fully upgraded uh, Lag 3. And if you watch my other video, you have a pretty good idea of what the aircraft is capable of. Um, it's a um, turn and burn fighter, though not that good a turn and burn fighter. Uh, we've upgraded it. Let's talk a little bit about the upgrades. We have picked up a uh, a little bit of fire from it uh, from 145 to 177 because you got the 123 uh, or the 23 millimeter uh, gun in here we've gone to the M 106V whereas so you're looking at 248 as opposed to two I'm sorry 527 as opposed to uh, 543 I wasn't even closer um, in any case uh, maneuverability you're looking at uh, eight eight nine when you start looking at uh, Mustangs in around right at 800 when you're looking at uh, BF 109 G's they're going to come in about 850 when you're looking at um, uh, zeros they are going to be coming in at about a 1100 when you're looking at Spitfires they're going to be coming in at about a thousand so this is a uh, slides right in the middle let's go on to uh, battle we talk about it historically the aircraft was a uh, uh, second generation successor uh, to the lag one which was admittedly god awful it was a heavy aircraft and it was in search of an engine powerful enough to make it make uh, use of the airframe. Uh, that really didn't exist in the Soviet Union in line engine. And you see a lot of that uh, when you don't have enough power, folks. You start trying to find ways to lighten up. And armaments was one of the ways that you could lighten up an aircraft. And you see it throughout the Soviet line. It tells you their in line engines just weren't quite where they wanted to be. They were getting about 1,200 horsepower out of them in the early war. Uh, you're getting, uh, and by the way, so did the uh, 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 early versions of the Merlin and the Allison engine were coming in about 1,200 horsepower. But this was an aircraft that was being constructed wood, so it was a little heavier than it should have been. And put in that regard, um, the engine was quite enough. Soviet Union was very worried about uh, their supplies of aluminum. And so the same reason the Mosquito was built was the same reason that this aircraft was built. The same reason that the Yak was being built uh, from wood was to conserve on those. Later in the war, uh, when you started getting the LA-7, uh, that was a uh, direct uh, linear successor two generations up, uh, they realized they're going. To, hey, you do have enough to, uh, in fact, grab this, uh, uh, make the components out of uh, aluminum, save some weight, and they got a whole different aircraft. And they made it with a radial engine with more power, uh, and things worked much better. And they took the the, uh, the mounting right off of an aerial uh, off an SU-20 I believe to um, make the LA-5 all right so we're up here we're kind of above our a little bit above our comfort level we do not want to get into a uh, front end with this bow fighter he's going to make us pay big time if we do and you notice we're taking him down and if the gun doesn't overheat in fact I'm going to let off of it here for a minute you can take them down. Okay, we're done. So we can get into this tussle in the center, squabble point. You notice the maneuverability on this is pretty good. You notice that I am in a dive and I am not even breaking 300, which is uh, not where you want to be. Engine or speed wise. Uh, Speed is kind of the bane of this thing. It just doesn't go as fast as it should. And some of that's going to be game balance. Some of that is going to be the actual uh, 
relation to the uh, historical aircraft. It's an arcade game. And some of us, you know, you've got to be able to balance out these aircraft so that, you know, they're not, uh, so you don't feel like, oh, you never take a Japanese aircraft because it's always going to be bad. Well, that's not the case, right? And you sometimes hear that uh, World of War Warplanes is a um, Soviet, uh, or I'm sorry, a Russian company, and therefore the uh, Russians are always going to have the superior aircraft. That's not true in this game. Okay, I can, I'm here to tell you that uh, uh, they give credit to other nations just fine. So I'm very happy to see that. Uh, I'm a refugee from World of Warships where uh, some of the national lines just stopped making sense. And uh, so I'm very happy to see this aircraft, uh, the aircraft in here bounce out as well as they do. And if that means that they're not quite up to their successors in that regard, I'm just fine with that. I like how they balanced out the aircraft and there's very few really poor aircraft in the game. And this one is by no means a poor aircraft. Um, but it just makes you question why you, I'm, they may have just done it for significance, but I don't see a whole lot of difference between that and the Yak-1. I would have rather them see them kind of mix the Yaks and the and the lags together and into a single line, but um, maybe they could, I don't know. And every once in a while I get my uh, mouse caught up in the keyboard and I get some of the strangest uh, reactions. I'm sure it throws my enemies off and gives me an advantage, right? Okay, so um, I would rate the gun gunfire as barely adequate as compared to most of uh, the fighters out there and it's slow. If you had to say anything about the fully upgraded aircraft uh, the firepower isn't all that you'd want and the Speed is definitely not what you want. And you get some increase in the six, but there are aircraft at uh, six that are pushing 700 and going past 700, and you are stuck uh, and you are stuck at six. Okay, so this fellow decided he wanted to light me up. I'm going to return the favor and I get shot up by Blenheim so often that I'm very unlikely to let one go when I get it in my sights. Uh, here's a P-40, tough aircraft and surprisingly competitive at its tier. Okay, we took good control of that and had a good fun team uh, as well. So my thoughts on the aircraft, you're going to want to upgrade this as quickly as possible and as painlessly as possible. Uh, as it sits coming into tier 5, it's not very good. Uh, by the time you upgrade the, uh, the guns on it and you get the, the engines on it, then it becomes a more acceptable aircraft. It is... Uh, tougher than the KI-43, it's not as turny as a Spitfire, the aircraft I like better at this particular level, uh, but it's not bad. It isn't bad when it's fully upgraded, um, though I wish the gunpowder was better, I'm not going to lie. I wish the speed was a little faster. Um, and so we, we, said we got, actually got some, uh, came in third there on the winning side. Uh, actually got some silver, some gold, some experience. Not a terrible aircraft. Okay. So, um, and when you look at the upgrades now, when you look at the LA-5, I can research it, but I don't quite have enough money to buy it. So, uh, that's going to be uh, my job for today, is to go ahead and finish up uh, the uh, lag 3, get onto the LA-5, and uh, try to show you that one. I do want to thank you for watching. I want you to know how much I appreciate you watching. 
If you like the video, by all means, please uh, hit the like button. And I need subscribers horribly. I can uh, need all I can get. I'm a new content provider. Uh, this is the way I make my living. And your subscriptions and your views are what keep me on. So I do appreciate you so much. And I'm humbly uh, grateful for those of you that are uh, uh, watching and subscribing. You have a great day.